Good evening. Uh, my name is Marzena Ciesik. I represent today Creative uh, Europe uh, Desk Poland. I'll, I have this pleasure to uh, present you the Creative Europe uh, program and its opportunities um, to support um, video game uh, industry. I will start today meeting with a short presentation. Uh, and afterwards, I would, uh, I would invite you to uh, ask me uh, questions. You can do that either through um, the chat box or you can join me uh, here on stage, on virtual stage, by clicking the um, participate uh, button, upper, which is upper right uh, corner. So uh, we can have actually a live uh, a live uh, talk afterwards after my presentation and so yeah let me just share uh, my screen with you just a sec okay and i hope you all see everything uh, well uh, so, Creative Europe uh, program is a financial uh, support program of European Union. Uh, it's a program of European Commission uh, managed uh, centrally by the Executive Agency for Education, Audiovisual and Culture. And by saying managed uh, centrally, I mean that the uh, Executive Agency is based in uh, Brussels. And all the applications uh, go there directly and all the evaluation process uh, is done also by the by the agency and agency is uh, responsible for the uh, contact with uh, with the beneficiaries of the program uh, creative europe program uh, is actually um in in this stage i mean in this in this shape is it was it was um uh, established for seven years, 2014-2020. So we are at the very last um, seconds, minutes of the of the program um, as it as it looks right uh, right now. Um, uh, but uh, I can assure you, the new uh, Creative Pro Europe program for the next seven years, starting from 2021 till 2027. Uh, will for sure um, exist, yet as you most probably uh, know, the, the negotiation regarding the uh, European Union budgets are still ongoing, um, so there are not there are still no a clear um, legal basis uh, that would um, allow the new Creative Europe program to be established. Uh, so today I need to focus on what's actually already done, so the program that's actually existing till the end of this year. Uh, yet, um, as we heard and as we know, um, the new program for the next seven years would be rather evolution and not the revolution of the existing program. So I believe uh, that the, the information I um, deliver you today would be useful even for the next um, for the next uh, seven years program. So the main objectives of the Creative Europe program are basically uh, the, uh, the the promotion uh, of cultural and linguistic diversity of Europe and developing audience, uh, European audience, but also audience for uh, European uh, works. What's very important is also the development of the professional's competence. And so the European um, um, sectors, European uh, markets could be more uh, competitive thinking about the uh, other markets or, or other uh, world markets as Asian or American ones. Uh, what does Creative Europe program do? Um, it's uh, divided into two uh, sub-programs, media that supports um, audiovisual sector, uh, culture uh, supporting um, creative and cultural sectors, uh, with basically everything apart from the, um, from the uh, audiovisual one, 
and under the uh, culture umbrella there are all there are also initiatives that you um, you can be aware of uh, such as european capitals of culture europa nostra award or the uh, the, the award for the um, the european union prize for contemporary architecture among others and cross sectoral strand uh, is the one that um, supports the initiatives that are somewhere in between um, audiovisual and uh, culture. Uh, it also supports the uh, Creative Europe uh, Desks uh, Network. Uh, so for the last uh, seven years, starting from 2014 till, uh, till 2020, uh, the, the budget of the of the Creative Europe program um, was uh, 1.46 billion euro, uh, of which um, more than uh, 100 million a year were distributed for the uh, audiovisual uh, sector. Uh, media um, media in its shape try, tries to. Um, help uh, tries to cover almost the whole audiovisual uh, sector starting from the development uh, and audiovisual uh, promotion support and um, among which um, there, are, there are schemes such as development of single projects these are the projects basically film projects but it also uh, supports the uh, the vr projects or xr projects so it could be also interesting for you um also um development of professional competence as i said before is very important for uh, for media so uh, it does support uh, does through the schemes such as trainings uh, access to market is is the one that supports the um, markets and uh, networking events uh, etc and um, reaching uh, the wide audience uh, is very important for the creative europe uh, program and it's actually done by um, different type of schemes and uh, supporting uh, European distributors and sales agents, uh, but also um, VOD platforms with European content, um, as well as the cinema networks, Europa Cinemas Network, uh, film festivals presenting European films, and uh, film education uh, projects. As to, um, thinking about the um, the participating countries uh, in the Creative Europe Media uh, sub-program. Uh, these are the 27 member states. Uh, till the end of this year, also, uh, UK uh, is a beneficiary of the, of the Creative Europe program. Uh, so um, all the initiatives that started um, this year or were planned for this year, but still will be ongoing for the next year, um, can be with the uh, UK um, beneficiaries on board. Uh, also, the countries, uh, the, um, the candidate countries, the potential candidates, uh, candidates benefiting from pre-access strategy are the, uh, the countries that participate in the program, uh, as well as the European Free Trade Association countries that are members of the European Economic Area. Um, and last but not least, the um, countries covered by the European neighborhood policy. Uh, but as you can see, those countries, they can only um, participate in for uh, schemes, trainings, access to market, film festivals and film uh, education. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, Creative Europe program supports the, the network of uh, Cre Creative Europe uh, desks. Uh, I represent the Polish one, uh, yet uh, you can find the, the, uh, the other desks uh, at um, actually almost all uh, the countries that participating in the program. And um, what, what is our role? Um, we, uh, we, we inform we promote the uh, Creative Europe program and sub-programs. We inform about different initiatives and events supported by the by the programs program. Mm. 
we organize uh, workshops, seminars uh, to, um, to develop uh, the, the professional skills, uh, but also um, we, um, um, we read applications, we advise uh, potential applicants uh, to prepare better applications and so forth. So if uh, I would be happy to, of course, to answer all your questions, but I also advise you to um, contact your uh, local uh, Creative Europe desks if, uh, if needed, if you would need any uh, information regarding the program and applications and so forth. Uh, okay, so now I will move to the to the uh, core of today's meeting. So the media support for the um, video games. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, one of the oops, sorry, uh, one of the um, uh, the schemes that are uh, focusing on the the video games is the uh, development, the, the support for development of video games. Um, and it's, it actually uh, supports the uh, narrative storytelling video games, meaning the games uh, in which the story is shown uh, or told through the whole uh, game. So it cannot be just a, a background uh, for the game. It has to be, it has to play the, the very important um, role in a game. Um, uh, the, the kind of projects that can apply for the um, for the subsidy um, uh, are the one starting from the concept of the game till uh, to the the first um, version of a playable uh, prototype. This can be uh, pretty um, difficult or tricky to to understand sometimes, um, but um, because it, it was kind of transferred from the from the film uh, sector so um so uh yeah so that's that's how it goes and what's very much important uh the the projects they have to be intended for commercial explore explo exploitation uh what when it's pretty much difficult sometimes to explain of what kind of of what type type of uh, games uh, could apply for the subsidy. It's um, sometimes easier to say which could not. Uh, so here you can find the, 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 some some information about the projects that could not um, apply for the funding. So these were, for example, all puzzle, memory, sport, quiz games, number games, or word games. Um, also, um, platforms for games, they, they could not uh, benefit from the scheme. Uh, multimedia art uh, projects, different tools and software for already existing, existing game concepts. Though those kind, of, um, th those kind of initiatives, they could be a part of the, um, of the application, but thinking of only about the new projects, the new games that are still um, being developed. Uh, also projects promoting tourism or specific organizations and those including pornographic or racist material could not, um, could not uh, apply for the media funding. Um, uh, thinking about the beneficiaries, thinking about, about the uh, applicants, uh, this, um, this scheme was Focusing is still focusing uh, on companies. The natural person are not eligible uh, to apply for the funding, except for the um, self-employed persons or uh, equivalent of that. Mm, so the companies that um, that could apply for the for the funding, they had to be established in one of the countries participating in media sub program. They had to be registered for a, a minimum of one year, uh, and what's very much uh, important, uh, the video game production or video ga game development has to be the the main uh, business activity. So, so for example, um, video game games publishers were not eligible to, to apply for the funding. Uh, the 
applying company um, has to own the majority of the rights to the projects mm, and uh, they have to also um, show at least one of the success story that they uh, were able to uh, achieve till now uh, meaning they had they have to prove that they developed or produced at least one uh, previous uh, video game that was also the storytelling one, the narrative one. Uh, how much? <laughs> Thinking about money. Uh, so, so um, for the last years, for the last seven years, um, the total grant uh, awarded awarded for the each project could range uh, from uh, ten thousand euro to one hundred fifty euro, and it could reach the maximum of the fifty percent eligible um, costs. Uh, mm, uh, the, the assessment the, uh, of the projects uh, work was covering uh, different, um, different values of the, of, the, of the project, starting from the uh, innovation and creative value um, of the project, the cultural diversity, but also um, European identity and heritage. Um, also the high level of uh, ambition in terms of user experience, artistic expression is, is very much important. Uh, thinking about the evaluation of the video games uh, projects. Uh, and uh, last, not, mm, last but not least, um, the commercial ambition and the cross-border potential, meaning that like the like media is always thinking about the about the audience and um, and how the the project could uh, reach uh, the the widest uh, possible um, audience. Uh, so for the last seven years, um, Creative Europe uh, supported uh, two hundred eleven. Uh, video games uh, for the uh, total amount of 24, almost 24.5 uh, million euro. And we are very proud um, uh, because of the Polish uh, developers who through those seven years um, uh, developed uh, 20 projects with the media support and uh, in total they received uh, 2.5 million euro um, uh, subsidy and just to name few uh, projects that received the, the media funding uh, i would mention the witcher developed by city projects project um, layers of fear by bluebird team and falling star by um, by ovid works um so thinking about the um the development we can also mm, we would like also to to share that uh, that these are the the success stories from um from this year nine uh, games nine uh, nine media supported um projects has been released uh, this year and in 2019, uh, there were 13, including the Polish uh, Layers of Fear uh, 2. Right, uh, so media supports not only the development of the, of, the, of the video games, but also through the scheme Access to Market, uh, was able to support also the, um, the markets, the networking events for uh, video games, uh, developers, publishers. Um, here you can find three of them in the Arena booth, Game Connection and 3D uh, Wire. These are the uh, initiatives that were supported uh, at least once or at least twice over those uh, seven years. And uh, last one one last thing that I would like to mention uh, are trainings. Unfortunately, uh, I 
couldn't find over the last years, I couldn't find anything, any trainings that were um, focusing on the video games or were were meant, were, were able to fulfill the video games um, developer's needs. So I believe there is still a floor to, um, to fulfill that. Uh, but uh, I would like to mention uh, the, uh, the the workshops organized by the uh, animation workshop, the Danish um, um, University College, uh, and and its uh, workshops for um, for animators, basically. Uh, so okay, thank you very much for this um, for your patience and. I'm here now to answer all your questions. Let me stop sharing uh, my screen. Hi, can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah, hello, hi. Uh, I've already written it on a chat, but maybe I can read if it's okay uh, to you. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Creative Europe program in the context of a possible Polish veto, uh, because if I understand it correctly, uh, the U.S. won't be approved, so no one could apply for the future Creative Europe program. Uh, could you elaborate on that? It would be really nice. And my second mm -hmm. question, which I wanted to ask you, uh, was about maybe is there any possibility in a future program to um, when it comes to the game developer, the game development to focus on maybe some smaller independent projects because, uh, as you mentioned, the Polish Witcher, even the first part, it was rather big. Uh, so maybe some smaller projects, uh, less restrictive, also for a smaller amount. Thank mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for for those questions. So yeah, I'll start with this um, difficult one. Um, yeah, so uh, we are at this moment that, yeah, the, 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 uh, the budget, the European Union budget is still, um, it's still not confirmed. Um, so, well, as actually I had, the, we had a meeting with the, with the European Union Com Commission representatives this afternoon. And I, I can only repeat of what they said to us. Uh, meaning that um, uh, tomorrow and the day after would be the crucial uh, days. So everybody is hoping for for the best scenario. Though in terms uh, in terms it doesn't happen, uh, there would be a provisionary provisionary budget. Um, meaning uh, that the program would need to wait a bit for the. Uh, for the for the budget to to be um, adapted, so if if the, if it doesn't happen, then everything would be a bit postponed. Well, still we are this year we are at this very difficult moment because normally at this time of the year um, there were some um, some calls already uh, closed for the next year, and yeah, this year it's. it's Pretty much different uh, thanks to um, no because of well the situation that we are all uh, aware of uh, and uh, answering your your um, second question um, it's um, right yeah I, I actually choose the Witcher because I kind of believe that it would be the project that everybody is aware of but uh, thinking about the Polish uh, beneficiaries of this year they were actually um, like. These were projects, uh, at least one of them, um, with the beneficiary who is a self-employed um, one-person uh, company. Uh, so yeah, it's all doable. It's um, it's it's all the, you know. If if you have an interesting project, uh, it's definitely worth to to think about it. Though um, this experience, I mean the the, the previous experience. Either of the company or the um, or the person itself, meaning the, um, the owner, for example, would be would be vital, and it would be very much uh, important to to prove that you already 
did something that you developed and produced the the the, the game but it's not it's nothing like um, like the, 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 the like the, the funding was only um, focusing on the biggest player because uh, it's not I mean it's it's very much open for the for the um, different types of uh, of uh, applicants I didn't mention that but I think it's also important to um, to, to uh, mark that um, that the companies that could apply for, for the funding they could be also uh, non-profit ones so it's it's very much open for any type of uh, of companies but the project would be crucial i mean the, the artistic value of the project okay would be crucial. thank you thank you very much for for your response thank you Okay, so I, there's a question about the category of um, 360 video. Is it is game or film? Well, it depends. Actually, it depends on the on the type of the of the applicant. Because um, as I mentioned in the, in my presentation, the video games um, video game development uh, was open for the um, for the companies that which main activity is video game development, video game uh, production. Uh, but uh, but if, if the main activity of the company is film production, they can apply for the um, for the for the um, development single project, which is focusing on the on the development of film projects. Um, but for the last couple of um, for the last couple of years um, um, within this um, the scheme there are only there are also uh, VR uh, non-linear uh, projects being supported so so it, it, it basically yeah, it's it's based on the on the company main activity they can actually I mean like um, you could think about both of them I mean both of those uh, schemes Um, okay, so there is a question from uh, Nikai regarding the the participation in the in the industry events. Um, so yeah, media Creative Europe media supports the uh, organization of the of those kind of initiatives, uh, but it doesn't support the individuals to um, to to participate in. So, if you are thinking about the participating um, in those kind of um, projects, markets, meetings, uh, you would need to you would need to cover the, the fee or um, by yourself, or look for some funding in the uh, in the uh, local market. Okay, I have a question from Martin. Is the games program also for learning games and serious games, or do they belong to another program? Mm. Uh, the, the, yeah, Creative Europe program supports the um, the, the narrative uh, games, meaning the, uh, the the learning games. If I understood. Uh, well, this term will not be will not be eligible as it is, or if it would be a part of the um, of the of the bigger story, then it could be possible. But uh, like thinking about the um, basics, I would say rather um, it would be challenging. So till now, and I hope I believe it would stay the same. Um, uh, it, there was one call per year for the uh, development of uh, video game scheme uh, well for the last couple of years it was uh, february um for sure it won't it won't happen um this year in this timing everything uh, as, as what you said uh, is pretty much postponed um so um first the program the new program needs to be adapted we hope, uh, we believe it will be done um, at the beginning of 2021. 
uh, and afterwards the call will be published. So I believe for the agency it would um, take at least a couple of weeks uh, to prepare the calls and so forth. Um, so I don't believe that uh, any of the calls will be actually um, uh, announced before uh, March, unfortunately. Is, is, is it true that you as a company needs to have shown prior success? Success uh, asks uh, Martin. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Um, Media Creative Europe uh, program uh, supports the companies uh, basically that that um, that um, exist on the market and that can actually show that they achieved uh, something. So, in terms of uh, of the scheme, in terms in terms of the development of video games uh, scheme. Uh, the company that uh, applies for the funding, um, it has it has shown uh, that they produced or developed um, at least one uh, narrative uh, video game so far uh, for the last uh, for the last three years. If I'm uh, if I'm correct, I mean these were the the guidelines for the for, for 2020 uh, that the company had to pre present the the. the um, that they that they developed the um, the, the previous game uh, from 2000, 2017 till two thousand twenty yeah so that's that's definitely correct um, yeah it's it's pretty much difficult to to apply for the funding if you are a newcomer um, because it would be very much difficult to fulfill all the guidelines. But I need to stress, I need to mark that um, I'm, I'm talking about the Creative Europe program for, for that exists, still exists uh, from 2014 till 2020. Uh, but those regulations, they might, might be different for the next, um, next seven years. So, so be aware of that. Does Creative Europe offer any activities supporting video game uh, preservation, Ex for example, museums and ar archival works? Uh, Mikai asks. Um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Um, not in the shape of the Creative Europe program. Not in this. Um, not in the seven years um, program. I didn't hear about any initiatives like that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I don't think there, 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 there were any focusing on the uh, preservation, basically, or ar archiving, ar archive, archiving. Okay, we still have a couple of minutes. Um, for the meeting. So, if there are any other questions, feel, please feel free to ask me. Uh, if there are not, uh, you can also contact me uh, either through um, through the email or or. Or my, I'll just uh, send you my contact details. Mm, just a sec. In the chat box. So here you have. So here you have the um, the Creative Europe Desk Poland um, web website with our contact details. So in terms, in case you have any questions regarding. Um, the program itself, its schemes, and um, once the program is um, is actually adopted, I believe there would be uh, way more of them. Uh, feel free to contact me. Feel free to ask. Um, I would be happy to to answer your questions. But also bear in mind that um, that there are also a Creative Europe desks in other countries. 
So if you need any assistance, um, I would definitely advise you to, to contact your, um, your uh, local uh, desks because, uh, yeah, that, that's how it works. We try to support, we as the Polish um, Creative Europe Desk, we try to support the Polish market, the Polish um, industry, uh, but, you know, the German ones, um, they would be happy to, 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 to help the, the German, German companies, for example. Right, so if there are no uh, more questions, um, I would definitely just advise you to, um, to uh, stay tuned, uh, to uh, keep checking of what's, what's going on, uh, to, um, to observe and to uh, keep your fingers crossed for the Creative Europe program and the whole um, European Union budget to be adapted soon. Uh, because, yeah, that would mean um, there are still more fundings for the creative cultural sectors in, uh, in Europe. And, uh, and yeah, but yeah, it still, it still needs some, some time. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Because like, as I mentioned at the moment, the guidelines um, can be a bit different. Uh, to, to those that I presented to you today, uh, but I believe and I, and I hope that you know the basis, basics um, would remain the same, uh, and the video game industry will still be um, part of the Creative Europe Media uh, sub program. Thank you very much. <laughs>